If I were to ask you to paint a picture in your head of the oldest possible thing on the planet, you would probably paint a rock, I'm assuming. When we think of old or ancient, our minds automatically go to rocks, and that's for good reason. It's because they were there before everything else on the planet. When talking about rocks in geologic time, it's pretty much impossible for our little human brains to comprehend thousands of years, let alone millions or even billions of years. For example, this rock was formed about 450 million years ago at the bottom of a deep ocean and then it was pulled under deep underground and metamorphosed into a schist. This rock, however, formed at the surface as a lava flow about 7,000 years ago in Oregon. That's pretty recent geologically. So both of these rocks are very ancient when it comes to comparing them to our human lifetimes. The difference between them is that this rock formed on an earth that didn't yet have trees, land animals, land plants, humans. Dinosaurs were yet to exist for another hundreds of millions of years. And this rock formed pretty recently. Humans existed and probably were roaming around in the area where this lava flow was. The dinosaurs had been extinct for millions of years at this point. But have you ever thought about the oldest rock on the planet? Where that is, where that might be? how it formed and when it formed, what Earth was like when that formed. Well, I actually bought a piece of it. So this is a piece of the Jack Hill sandstone and it formed 3.3 billion years ago, which let's just take a minute, as I was saying, let's just take a minute to really try to wrap our heads around the fact that this is 3.3 billion years old. And I may have lied because it's not actually the oldest rock on the planet, but what makes it special is the material inside of this rock called zircon. The zircon grains in this rock are the oldest geologic material found on the planet so far. <laughs> I bought it from Mini Museum, which I have bought a couple other geologic things from, including a coprolite, which is dinosaur poop. <laughs> the zircon crystals in this rock formation in Australia formed when the planet was only about 160 million years old. That still is a really long time to us humans, but if you look at the geologic time scale, the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, so 160 million years is the blink of an eye for our little planet. The zircon crystals in this formation, some of them are 3.8 billion, and the oldest ones that have been studied so far have been found to be 4 billion 374 million years old. That is six zeros. I don't think there's enough time for me, for my brain to ever possibly understand how much time that is. At this point, you're probably wondering how the heck are the crystals in this rock 4.4 billion years old, yet the rock itself is 3.3 billion years old. Well, the way that works is because the nature of zircon, it is very durable. It's physically durable, meaning it doesn't physically break down very easily compared to other minerals, and it also has an extremely high melting point, so chemically it's also very resilient. This is why the original rock that zircon crystallized in, likely an igneous rock, like a granite, that rock formed first and the zircon crystallized in that rock about 4.4 billion years ago, and then that rock was pushed to the surface and eroded at the surface, and that zircon crystal, the zircon crystals now found in the Jack Hills sandstone, were eroded off of that granite into streams or beaches or somewhere else on the surface, and because of the beautiful rock cycle on our planet, they were eventually deposited somewhere new and compacted into a new sedimentary rock. Voila, we have the Jack Hill Sandstone, which is also, I think, lightly metamorphosed, not just um, a good old regular sandstone. It's a metasediment. Okay, so a little bit of background on zircon. Zircon is the natural mineral that we are talking about here, but you're also probably thinking of cubic zirconia, which is a man-made material that is found usually in more affordable jewelry because it's a replacement for diamond. It looks like diamond because it's very clear. And then we also have zirconium, which is the element that is in the chemical formula of zircon. So we have element zirconium, the natural 
real mineral zircon, and then we have cubic zirconia, which is not a mineral and it's a man-made material. So when the zircon crystallizes, pretty much it records like the conditions that it crystallized in, and this is recorded in the core of that crystal. So if you were to look at a zircon crystal in a microscope, you would see these rings, and they're kind of like tree rings. This is because um, as the crystal grows, it adds on a new concentric band around its crystal, and each one of those bands represents a different growth stage. This is not only a thing for zircon, you can see this in other crystals like feldspar. Feldspar is a very popular example of this. And you can also see it in hand samples if you were to look at a geode. Geodes have agate rings usually, and you can see the concentric banding of the agate as it grew in the vesicle. Since zircon is so physically and chemically durable, it can go through several steps or even several cycles of the rock cycle without being destroyed or altered at all. So it can hold on to all of that information from when it first crystallized up to all the different growth stages of that crystal. And it's pretty amazing the stuff that it can tell us. So this is how we can get a 4.4 billion year zircon crystal within a 3.3 billion year old rock. 4.4 billion years ago when the zircon crystals in, this, in the Jack Hill sandstone were first crystallized, it was during the Hadean Eon, which was previously thought to be completely void of life, and so far we still don't have evidence that life existed at all in this eon, but the zircon crystals in the Jack Hill sandstone have given scientists a little bit of hope to maybe possibly one day finding evidence that life may have existed outside of the Archaean Eon, which is where we currently believe life first started. The reason for this is because in these crystals, in these zircon crystals, scientists were looking at the oxygen isotopes. Using the oxygen isotopes, they we're pretty much able to figure out that the zircon crystals crystallize in the presence of water. That means that the temperatures on the planet had to have been cool enough for liquid water to exist in the first place, possibly even an ocean. There's still a lot of research to be done on the zircon crystals, but this is really exciting because previously we thought that the Hadean Eon was like Hades. <laughs> The name. <laughs> we previously thought that it was just all fire and a lava ocean and no, no possible environment for liquid water whatsoever. So these tiny, tiny little time capsules have already changed our idea of what life may have looked like early, early on in Earth's history. At this time, during the Hadean Eon, plate tectonics had just started moving around the planet, and also there was a lot of meteorite impacts and a lot of early volcanism, which is why scientists used to think, or may still think, that there were literal lava oceans. <laughs> so not exactly the place that you'd want to go visit if you had a time machine. Whoa, whoa, Doc, I'm stuck here. I can't, I can't be stuck here. I got a life in 1985. I got a girl. So although zircons are a very common mineral on the planet, they actually take up a really, really small amount of the actual space of a rock. So if I were to take this tiny, this is already a pretty tiny piece of the Jack Hill sandstone, if I were to take this piece and turn it into a thin section, a thin section is a piece of really, really thin rock, 30 microns to be exact, glued onto a piece of glass so that you can put it under a microscope and look at it with polarized light. If I were to make one of those out of this piece, I don't even know if I'd find that many zircon crystals in there. It would mostly be the other, the other mineral grains that I'd be looking at, and I'd have to kind of hunt for a zircon crystal. So this is probably why it took us a pretty long time to actually find these pieces of zircon in this rock. It's because you have to really be looking and know what you're looking for in order to find it. I have seen zircon crystals before when I've studied uh, thin sections in classes in college, but it was actually pretty rare because you'd have to really be looking for one and it's really exciting when you do find one because they're so tiny. Um, but the telltale sign that you found a zircon is that there is a little halo around it. And this is actually a radiation halo because zircon has radioactive elements of uranium in there. And that brings me into my next topic, which is radiometric dating. You're probably wondering, okay, Becky, zircons are great. They're like, 
time capsules, they tell us all this information, but how exactly do we know this? How exactly do we know that this, this rock is 3.3 billion years old and the crystals inside are 4.4 billion years old? This is because zircons contain the element uranium. Uranium usually shows up in rocks in two isotopes, uranium-238 and uranium-235. And when uranium breaks down, when it decays, it makes a daughter material, and in this case of uranium, the daughter material is lead. And for each isotope of uranium, there's a different isotope of lead. So, when scientists go and they find a zircon crystal, they can use these really fancy instruments, these really expensive instruments, to look extremely close and actually count the number of atoms of lead that there are, and they can then compare this to the half-life and the original parent material of uranium, um, and do all the calculations, all the fancy calculations, to figure out how old the crystal is and when it first crystallized. And this can go as far as looking at the core of the zircon crystal and counting the atoms of lead in the core, and then also counting the atoms of lead in the outer parts of the crystal, in the outer rings, and figuring out when it first crystallized, and then comparing it to the last growth stage and how old it was when that happened. There's just so many, so many cool things about zircon, and because of our ability to use radiometric dating to um, find absolute ages of rocks, we now know that this zircon in this rock formation formed before any other zircons that we found. And another fun fact for you, the first absolute ages of rocks that were calculated were calculated using zircon crystals. So the next time you're driving and you see some cool rocks on the side of the road, or the next time you're hiking and scrambling up some granite boulders, just remember that there could possibly be some tiny little zircon crystals in there, and they could be holding their own little time capsules of the region where you're hiking or where you live. And yeah, just I hope you appreciate that the next time you look at some rocks and think about how old they are. And if you live in Australia, just know that I'm extremely jealous that you live on the same continent as the oldest pieces of our planet. And as always, I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.